The Inmotion V11 is a fantastic starter wheel and I'm stoked it was my first EUC. Boom, video done. Hang on, hang on. No wheel is perfect and the best choice for me may be a terrible fit for you. Everyone's needs are different. I'm making this review now because I'll soon be saying goodbye to my V11. I've outgrown the wheel and I'm looking to the future for my next adventure machine. Check out my last video to see the wheel I've chosen and why. Keep in mind, this review is from my perspective of learning on the V11 and becoming an experienced rider. What's up everyone, I'm Jono and this is my 4000 km review of the Inmotion V11. Yeah, it's really coming down now. Well, as a kid, beating up my learning process. Cheers everyone and ride safe. To better understand where I'm coming from, I want to tell you how this all started. After all these years, I finally bought a one wheel. I was happily carving it up a couple of weeks living the float life. Today I was feeling good and wanted to go exploring. The scenic lookout was my destination. Up to the lighthouse. Right there. It didn't look far and I started ripping. I later found out that it was seven kilometers each way from where I was starting. At the base of the lookout, the battery hit 50%. I had to turn back. Captain Jack Sparrow took the helm, eking out every last drop of range. Alas, it was in vain. I had to carry the board the last three kilometers home. A misadventure, but a useful one. It revealed the extremely limited range of the pint and one wheels in general, 11 kilometers in total. For the first time, I began to seriously consider an EUC. On paper, EUC seemed perfect. Larger wheels and suspension crushed little bumps that could end a one wheels ride. Battery and power incomprehensible for the one wheel. One failed adventure was all it took. I was ready to start my search for the perfect DUC. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, now I know I went a bit hard on one wheels there, but I still own and love to ride my pint for little rips around here. Uh, honestly, you just can't expect as much out of it as an EUC. Don't get me wrong, I have lots of love for the one wheel community. And with that being said, let's get back to the Inmotion V11 review. I soon found my favorite reviewers such as Sean, Adam at Wrongway and Madpack devouring all of the content I could find. I was comparing the V11 with the S18 at the time. The appearance of the S18 didn't appeal to me, plus it had a smaller battery. Adam's video on the S18 of I've had enough put me off. His comment of the motor grinding noise steered me away from it. Let's go down here and listen to the motor sound. It's like rattly and clonky. Oh yeah, like that. It's a personal thing, but I like the look of the V11. The S20 was just coming out. It seemed way too big, expensive, and untested for a noob rider like me. I learned to ride the one wheel almost immediately. So I was pretty surprised when I was struggling to learn on the V11. On top of that, I learned to ride a manual unicycle as a kid. So I thought that would go a long way in speeding up my learning process of an EUC. However, it still felt really weird. It is more challenging than a Kingsong 16X or 18L that have lower pedals and no suspension. When starting out, definitely run a lower suspension pressure and a softer tire pressure to assist with the learning process. Just be sure not to hit any potholes. I don't really have any good footage of this period, so that's all I'm gonna say on the matter. 
What I heard when researching the V11 was that it's simply a good all-rounder and that's turned out to be true. This is part of what makes it such a great starter wheel. Jack of all trades. You aren't locked into any one riding style. Riding slowly and controlled. Faster carving. Off-road with suspension comfort and seated cruising. All wrapped up in a water resistant package. I'm making this review after 4,000 kilometers and five months riding time. My skills and confidence have grown immensely. My riding posture is nice and straight. My knees no longer clamp the wheel. The pedal height isn't a challenge as it was at the start. The V11 can be ridden at walking speed with practice. It can be difficult and depends on how high your suspension and tire pressure is set. The higher, the more challenging. Fast carving is incredibly fun and one of my favorite things on an EUC. I enjoy the sensation of the higher saddle bracing against my outside leg in turns. The wheel can be aggressively leaned over without the fear of pedal scrapes. The Michelin tire I use transforms this experience as I explain in my tire change video. I'm always grateful to have suspension with these little potholes and bits in the road. Having seen the array of terrain I ride, you can understand why I'll never buy a non-suspension wheel the suspension is rudimentary on the V11 and requires regular maintenance. It doesn't have any adjustability on the fly. Nonetheless, I'm happy to always have it on the V11. On the other hand, you may have heard the V11 referred to as the Cadillac or Cushy Ride EUC. I believe this is partly due to the greater unsprung mass which is better able to soak up and isolate the rider from small frequency, road noise and vibrations. If abused, the suspension is downright dangerous. The wheel likes to shoot you off jumps like a pogo stick, your feet separating from the foot plates. The solution, well, careful riding, power pads and rebound damping, which the V11 doesn't have. I always felt cautious off-road because the V11 isn't a rugged construction and I didn't want to trash my wheel. I didn't add a seat right away. I waited a few weeks until I was a competent standing rider. The seat and studded foot plates were then ordered together. At first my legs were incredibly sore and turned into jelly when learning seated. However, now I can ride seating as much as I want and quickly switch between sitting and standing. The height of the wheel makes the seat quite comfortable out of the box for me at six foot tall. I can't imagine riding seated for long distances without suspension. It must be quite a jarring experience. I really enjoy easily sitting and standing without the use of hands and quickly found front pads inhibited this movement. That's why I sacrificed the front pads in favor of switching to and from a seated position easily. At first, I thought seated riding was a bit strange and dorky, but I was so stoked to find out it's just another riding style that's unlocked and just as much fun as standing. The longest I ride without taking a break is about an hour. The seat is a lifesaver here. Having the option to sit and stand, to rest your feet and legs as needed, means that long distances can be covered with greater ease. I've never had a sore butt from this seat. So I didn't actually have any rain riding footage with my full kit because I never want to film with all this gear on. But here it is. And then of course I have the wheel cover which I just keep in the backpack ready to go at all times. 
and a little piece of Velcro at the front to help keep it in place. And I've never had it come off. So you can see it's all pretty nice and dry under that rain cover. I was tentative at first to ride in wet conditions and rain until I opened up the wheel and inspected how water resistant it is. During my tire change, 2000 kilometers, I inspected the wheel and siliconed areas of importance. Then with the addition of a plastic bag cover, I was out and riding in all weather conditions, and big puddles. Unlocking the wheel is a great feeling. I would estimate I've ridden around several hundred kilometers in the rain, which amounts to a few hours. I was recently asked, do you like riding in the dark? To which I said, well, if I can see well. While all the reviews say this is one of the best headlights around, i not too impressed. I got caught after dark without my lights and the V11 headlight is sufficient if you go at slow speed. However, you can't see anything at head height and that's why I really recommend a helmet mounted light. I combine two 1000 lumen front lights, one on the front of the wheel and one on my helmet in conjunction with the V11 headlight. The rear light is excellent and blinks when braking, which I love. I added reflective tape to the wheel to make myself more visible from the sides. Passive visibility options are an excellent idea since they're always there and they don't have any batteries that can go flat. Starting out, I didn't even scratch the power on this wheel. Now I'm often below 10% safety margin in EUC world, hitting 5,000 watts peak power. Beeps are a constant reminder to take it easy. I've respected the wheel and it's never dropped me. If you have to ride amongst cars, I can see how the V11 speed will be way too slow. Overall, I'm quite pleased with the speed and range. However, nothing shows the wheels lacking torque more than off-road trails. Running slow speeds and hitting a rock or route where you require the torque to pull the wheel over and instead lurching isn't a great feeling. The most consistent problem I had was downhill braking death wobbles. I knew this was a problem area for me, so I practiced it. Once I practiced the proper technique, I could eliminate this as a factor and now I immensely enjoy riding downhills. I'm now going to walk you around the InMotion V11 and just point out some things. So starting off with portability, I found that it's light enough that I can lift it into the back of a car. It's listed at 27 kilograms, but I weighed it at 31.2 kilograms, so a bit heavier. And the integrated trolley handle can be grabbed with one hand and flicked up and wheeled around, which makes it easy. Now, when it comes to safety, it's got quite a few ticks in the right boxes. So the first being the water resistance, because if you get uh, water into the main board, you'll get a cutout, which is quite dangerous and also into the battery housings, which can cause your battery fires. So that's a good feature. I use a plastic... I use a plastic bag over the top of the saddle while I'm riding in the rain, just for extra peace of mind. And during my tire change and tear down, I also siliconed up the important components. The suspension adds a nice safety element in case any potholes or bumps catch you unawares and they get soaked up. And it also increases traction as it keeps that tire on the ground as you're riding. The larger diameter 20 inch wheel is also a nice feature because that won't create as much rolling resistance over your bumps and obstacles. 
Now all the reviews that I've heard, they've said that the front light is one of the best in the EV. Now when you're actually riding, the wheel protects you with tilt back. And now this is at 100% battery going to be your 50k an hour or at fancier mode, 55 kilometers an hour. However, as the battery drops off, that tilt back comes lower and lower as well. Overload. Please get out. Uh, the wheel also will beep at you. However, when you're going really fast with wind noise and your full face helmet on, you might not be able to hear it. So that's where EUC World comes in and you pair that with a Bluetooth speaker and that really just gets those alarms audible for you. When we're talking about charging and battery safety, there's no smart BMS, so there's less checks and balances there. InMotion released a firmware update, which helps to check if there's any dangerous conditions and will alert you via the app or the wheel beeping. I'd say the original foot plates are quite dangerous and slippery. I had a little slip while turning and I went and ordered the uh, started plates straight away. However, I managed to get myself a set of nylon ove foot plates, which I'd highly recommend. I'd say the rear power pads are essential for safety. For hard braking, you just need something to grip onto. And my first set were simply made out of a block, a uh, yoga foam block. So you can do that. However, it's pretty hard to get the stick on. So just need to really take care to clean the surface and stick it on tight. The side pad plates that I bought aren't quite big enough and I'd recommend the larger Grizzler fairing plates for the V11. Now my main issue when it comes to build quality is uh, the wheel squeaking. And there's a bit of play in the saddle forward and back which seems to just develop in the sliders for all users. And that particularly became noticeable once I stripped the wheel and cleaned cleaned it up and lubricated the sliders, it just seemed to get a bit of play, play forward to back. Now I had a look at the internal build quality when I swapped my tyre out. The motherboard is fairly well sealed and has a rubber gasket. There was Loctite on all the important bolts and they were firm. When I removed the battery cover there was no sign of water ingress, although there was some dust. The bearing seals that InMotion implemented to address the water damaging the bearings were well greased and seemed to be doing the job. I did find one issue and that was the silicone on the motor wires was degraded. I picked it off and applied some fresh silicone. All the bolts that should be tight were tight. And then my other main issues with the build quality were these saddle bolts. Now that was known issue from first batch in 2020 and mine still snapped so that's my little fix right there with a uh, the clamp it's kind of working you don't essentially need them but it would have been nice if they'd fixed that up now, I haven't had any problems with the rim denting and I keep my tire pressure always above 30 psi up to 33 psi and I'm a fairly light guy around 70 kilograms riding weight, so no problems with the rim there. Now when it comes to accessories I've added to the wheel, most important I'd say are the Nylano foot plates, which are angle adjustable and have mountain bike studs, which can be screwed in and out to your preference. And also the stiffness so that it stays upright like this can be adjusted. Now that's really important. You don't want your foot slipping as you're cornering or going with bumps. And also, I've found during hard death wobbles that my foot has not been thrown from the foot plate. And the other essential upgrade I'd say is the rear power pad. The stock in motion seat has been quite good. It's contoured, comfortable, although a little bit short at the front. I also find I'm perched up the front of it. The seat can be quite dangerous as the slippery Velcro can pull away from the seat. What I've seen suggested is that a zip tie is run through the front of the seat so that it can't tear away in this manner. I haven't done this and instead I thoroughly cleaned the surface after sanding it with sandpaper, cutting into it with a knife 
and then using two-part epoxy glue to weld the Velcro onto the seat. The reason it needs to be removable in the first place is because of those darn top suspension chambers. You have to remove the seat in able to get to them to add pressure. Some people in the comments have added valve extenders, but these can leak and cause more issues and often require additional modifications. The extended plate, the pedals, the bumpers. I got the fan cooler as well, which I'm not sure how effective that is for actually cooling. However, I siliconed around it anyway because I wanted that mainly for waterproofing. And I also got the extended mud guard, which I find is excellent. I've zero problems with the water being kicked up. When it comes to DIY modifications I've made to the wheel, I've added this foam side pad, just something for my knee to rest on. It's very comfortable. I added this GoPro mount at the front and that's for a front light, but you can also attach your GoPro there. I repaired the saddle bolts. This rear motion alarm is a handy safety feature. And one of the greatest additions was the addition of the Michelin Street 2 tire, which is its own video. Now the stock tire is okay, but I really didn't like it. And you can find out more about it in my tire change video. So what is it like to live with the V11 on a daily basis? To be a vehicle class wheel encompasses the ability to run errands, replace car trips, attending appointments and doing shopping as well as traveling to visit friends and family. It requires the wheel to have enough features to allow this effectively and safely. The V11 did this so well and gave me such confidence that I was able to sell my car within two months. Yeah, that's how I do shopping on the EUC. I've been living car free ever since. I still prefer my e-scooter for certain trips, such as short trips out to the shops or to the beach where I don't want to gear up so much. And I also find hanging a grocery bag over the bars to be really handy. Well, I love how quiet the motor is and it's silent operation. Unless you have the high beam on, then the cooling fan will turn on. The quirks of the squeakiness don't really bother me too much. It's only at slow speeds that you can hear them. Now, the main thing is the power and the battery. Low battery mode activated. Yep, that's the sound of low battery mode. I have to check that it's 100% every ride and then charge it overnight for the next ride. It's a constant thought. I somehow forgot to talk about the regular upkeep and maintenance of this wheel. So having suspension, that is another factor that needs to be looked after. About once a week or every 100 kilometers or so, I check the tire pressure and make sure it's at 33 PSI and also the lower suspension chamber because this one's easy to get at. I run mine at 110 PSI. It took me quite some time to settle on this value and as you become more experienced rider, you can run it stiffer. Certainly when I was starting out, I was on 70 PSI. I found that the recommended chart by InMotion, which can be found on the foot plate, was fairly inaccurate. So it's really by trial and error that you can hone in on what works best. My best suggestion when it comes to the suspension is not to calibrate it solely on your weight, but definitely your riding weight. And then better than that is to target a sag. This means gearing up and stepping on the wheel to see how much the suspension compresses under that mass. I target around 25 millimeters or 30% of the suspension travel. This range is probably for more experienced riders. Definitely use a softer suspension when you're just learning so that the pedals are lower to the ground. The top suspension chamber is a pain in the ass to get to and requires the seat to be ripped off and the side panels to be removed to be able to access the valves. Therefore, I only do them 
uh, every few weeks. I used to run them at the recommended 50 PSI. At my current 110 PSI, the top should be half that, as suggested by InMotion, so 55. However, I've upped it to 75 PSI. My thought process is that I want to reduce the rebound speed to hopefully stop the pogo stick effect and being shot off the wheel as often. The air shock pump that came with the V11 was such terrible quality. It immediately broke on me and the local shop was fantastic, sent out a replacement about when the gauge stopped working on this one. But the replacement shock pump immediately broke uh, in a different way. You hear that? So it's leaking from within the... Yeah. And now that tire is flat. So I went out and bought this digital shock pump, which I highly recommend. The sliders get wiped down with a cloth and then I lubricate them with a dry PTFE grease. I also inspect the tire for any shards, sharps or glass that might be stuck in them. And I also run around the wheel with an Allen key, just checking the external bolts to make sure none have worked loose. The charging port door can easily work itself loose. I've wrapped a few rounds of tape around it and that has firmed it up nicely. I've kept a service log for the V11. For anyone interested, the link is in the video description. I love the kickstand. I use it on a daily occurrence, however, it has fallen over. And if you leave it down with a knobby, it can get caught and cause a cutout. I've never had a cutout on the wheel, in part thanks to the in-motion safety features, which is the tilt back and the beeps, which are very effective at alerting you to when you're hitting the limits of the wheel. I quite like how slim the wheel is. It doesn't strain my legs in any way, and it seems contoured as it comes up at the saddle. The V11 doesn't have a screen. Instead, it just has the battery indicator. This has been fine for me. If I need more detailed information, I have my smartphone on my wrist mount. A few last things I forgot to mention was that it can be difficult to turn this wheel on. It's a bit finicky. Uh, if you have gloves on, that doesn't work. You have to have your finger or thumb flat. I think warm hands seems to help. Make sure the wheel is perfectly upright. And if you have a failed attempt, then it seems like you have to reset the wheel by tilting it back and then forward again and maybe wheeling it around a little bit. And even standing on one foot plate and compressing the suspension. Uh, these are all things that have allowed me to get it running. I've really enjoyed using the InMotion app. It's very clean and intuitive. However, I've moved over to EUC World now, which is highly recommended for the extended features. I find that it doesn't play nice with EUC World, so I need to pick one or the other. However, EUC World can have connectivity issues when first loading up the wheel. My workaround is to first load the InMotion app, close it, and then open EUC World. This always connects with my wheel and has solved the issue. Does anyone else have a solution? The main things I use in EUC World are the alarms. I transfer the wheel alarms to EUC World, which then I can hear through my backpack Bluetooth speakers. This is a great setup because it mutes my music and feeds the alarms through. And I also like to have a look at the statistics at the end of the ride to see what my safety margin was, what hours per kilometer, total peak power. And this gives me an idea of how close I was to a cutout if I need to take it easier in the future. I quite like that it has split riding mode. Here are my settings that I use. I rode without fancier mode on for the first uh, few weeks and I'd recommend that. It lets you grow into the wheel and then when you're ready you can unlock that to higher speed and it also unlocks a higher torque which is a really nice unlock. I'll quickly cover some issues I've had with the wheel. Um, the first being 
there the trolley handle can slide off so I silicone that on and a dangerous one is up under the mud guard rocks and mud can get caught and seize the tire causing motor burnout and it's quite difficult to get that debris out of the uh, wheel well I've had that once and just worked out the rocks very slowly now it is a slower charging 2.5 amps uh, so that's about an eight or a nine hour overnight charge. I have done fast charging with two and unsurprisingly it was twice as fast. My typical ride is two hours long, 54 kilometers return trip with a break in the middle. It was possible to limp home on 50% low battery. Instead, I bought a second charger to leave at the midpoint for a charge up. I feel like I can ride hard for the first 50% of this battery then start easing back for the remainder. The wheel stays fairly capable until the low battery alarm hits at 15%. Now the total cost of my wheel, including accessories, is right here. And then my gear as well. And this gear is also used for my other PVs, like the one wheel and the e-scooter. Um, but honestly, the majority of the cost is for the gear to ride the EUC. Spud my man asks, with so many new wheels on the market, is the V11 still a good option to purchase in 2022? It's kind of interesting because I bought my V11 in 2022, but the landscape has been changing that quickly that we have so many new releases. But when you boil it down, there's only one more competitor within this price bracket and category of wheel, and that's the Pagode T4. It has higher performance at 100 volts, an extra 300 watt hours of battery at 1800 watt hours but it has a 16 inch wheel which is going to skew it for better performance on trails whereas I've been favoring a little bit more of street riding so I'd still be getting the V11 even today it is a bit more expensive than the Kingsong 18 but I feel that it's a much more complete package and that's why I would still buy it. However, the interesting thing is that the batch four has introduced problems with cutouts. So things don't always get better with EUCs. It seems to always be a roll of the dice. Wait and see my final conclusion and I still stand by it. The InMotion V11 has been an incredible starter wheel for me. I couldn't make a better pick even today. It blows my mind how lucky I was as a newbie to pick the best starter wheel for me. This boiled down to the fact of doing tons of research and watching quality reviews such as Wrong Way and Sean. No wheel is perfect, but many are perfectly adequate. The V11 is no exception. The sum of its parts far outweigh the issues I have faced. I was lucky that my batch 3 has zero major issues. Going into EUCs, you must keep in mind that they can have crippling problems. It has excelled at my original criteria of providing a solid foundation to learn and grow into without moving beyond its capabilities too quickly. A comfortable cushy suspension, both standing and seated, has allowed chill cruising, well, as much as the battery allows. I've finally made it to the lookout I was striving for and gone so much further beyond. Now I look to the horizon for my next adventure and next wheel. Cheers everyone and ride safe. <laughs>